These are great biscuits because you can make them fairly quickly if somebody arrives unexpectedly. You can whip these up, pop them into the oven and be ready when the cup of tea is ready. Hi, I'm Karen Shaw from Brushtech Enterprises and Forest Heart Eco Nursery in Mullaney. This is part of the Sunshine Coast Council's Living Smart program and I'd like to share with you some of my favourite bush foods that you can pick from the garden all year round. Before I start, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which this video is being filmed, the Gubby Gubby and Cubby Cubby mob. I would also like to acknowledge the First Nations people throughout Australia and appreciate and express my gratitude for their continuous care for country and generous sharing of information and knowledge about plants and animals of Australia's ecosystems. I'd like to also pay my respects to the elders, past, present and emerging. The three species I would like to share with you today is lemon myrtle, Bacchousia citriodora, Warrigal greens, Tetragonia tetragonoides, and little native mint, Mentha saturoides. These three are fantastic within the garden and you could grow them anywhere here on the Sunshine Coast. The first one I'd like to share with you is Bacchousia citriodora. This is a fantastic rainforest tree that occurs from northern New South Wales up into southeast Queensland. In the rainforest, amongst other trees, it could grow to be maybe eight or 10 metres, but most of the time in gardens where it's got a lot of sunshine and doesn't have that direct competition, it can tend to be about three to four metres. It has wonderful, soft, lovely green leaves with a red new growth, fantastic flowers in spring and summer that encourage the bees and butterflies into your garden and smells wonderful. The second species I'd like to share with you is the Warrigal Greens. This is a beautiful plant that grows along the coast of Australia and also throughout New Zealand and Japan. It's a very succulenty looking plant, a ground cover that can grow about 20 centimetres tall but can spread out to about two metres has these little tiny yellow flowers and then a hard knobby seed that will mean that it'll just keep coming up throughout the garden for years to come. Um, it's a great vegetable to have in the garden because it's constantly there. It'll grow in sun, it'll grow in shade. It um, can be used as a chop and drop, so you can use it to put into your compost heap. Ducks and chickens love it. It's a very versatile plant to have in the garden. The third one I would like to show with you is the native mint. So this delicate little mint has tiny little white flowers, can again grow to about 20 centimetres and be a lovely ground cover. It does like to be in moist shady spots, not running with water moist, but just sort of somewhere where it's going to be kept a little bit damp. Um, it will spread out and grow quite happily and sometimes you might want to contain that. It does grow well in a pot or in a hanging basket as well. To get us started, I'd like to make some lemon myrtle tea. And that's as simple as plucking off some leaves, putting them in your teapot with boiling water and allowing it to steep. To make lemon myrtle tea, it is really simple. Simply find your favourite teapot, add some leaves. Sometimes you can pick the darker, uh, older leaves and sometimes the fresher, newer leaves. They're both fine. The lovely smell that comes from lemon myrtle is because of the essential oil citral. And citral has a wonderful fragrance that is both calming, it's also anaesthetic, so you'll often see lemon myrtle used in cleaning products and things like that. But it's actually a really beautiful essential oil for lots of, lots of beneficial reasons. Uh, pop your torn leaves into the pot and then add boiling water. I've put about four leaves in there. Pop the lid on, let it sit for a little while while you do other things. The benefit about using lemon myrtle in your cooking is that it's now been commercially grown. In Gippsland, Victoria and in Bangalore, New South Wales, there are thousands of plants being planted in commercial properties and harvested. If you don't have it growing in your garden, you can purchase it from most supermarkets in these dry forms where you can buy the leaf dried and ready to go or even, in my favourite way, in a powdered form. For this recipe that I'm going to show you, we're going to use the dried ground powdered form. This is a great recipe. It's called our Lemon Myrtle Almond No-No Biscuits. And they're called No-No Biscuits affectionately in my family because they have no gluten, no dairy, no eggs, no sugar. But they're fantastic and they're tasty. 
So to make them, we're going to use almond meal as our base. I'm a dollop and splodge cook, so I'm going to make it here in front of you, but we will have the recipe available on the website. So we're going to use almond meal as our base, about, about two cups full. Then our lemon myrtle that's ground and dried, smells fantastic, and two good spoons full. Just going to mix those dry ingredients a little bit just to incorporate the lemon myrtle through the almond meal. And as you can see, almond meal sometimes has these lumps, so we'll get that going through. These are great biscuits because you can make them fairly quickly if somebody arrives unexpectedly. You can whip these up, pop them into the oven and be ready when the cup of tea is ready. So now we're going to add some coconut oil. And I'm going to put three good sized spoonfuls. Going to add some baking powder to the mix, just a small teaspoonful. This will just help the almond meal to rise when it's cooking later. And just mix that into the almond meal. Vanilla bean extract is delicious and this is a really nice one. So we're going to add a little teaspoonful of that as well. Now before I start mixing, we're going to add the sweetness, which will also be the liquid that binds everything together. So some maple syrup, about a third of a cup. Now mixing these all together, and they'll come together quite quickly and easily. Main thing is just incorporating that coconut oil throughout the rest of the dry ingredients. Once your almond meal mixture has all combined enough so that it becomes a dough that you could pick up with your fingers, then it's ready to go and be shaped into balls to put on the tray. So lightly grease your tray and you're just going to make small balls of the mixture and flatten. The benefit of this recipe is that with using almond meal, if you like chewy biscuits, then you will cook them for a shorter time. If you like crunchy biscuits, just cook these for a little bit longer. So I pop these into the oven at about 180 for about 20 minutes for a chewy biscuit and perhaps 25 minutes for a crunchier biscuit. Now these are all on the tray. We'll put them in the oven and enjoy them with a cup of lemon myrtle tea later on. So while that's cooking, I can't have the oven on and just have one thing there. So what we're going to do is use some of this native mint. Native mint is fantastic. Like I said, it's a nice little ground cover, has these beautiful little white flowers. One thing that's great about these is that they can be used with savoury or sweet things. If you're thinking savoury, maybe you could add it to peas when you're going to be doing your minted peas. It's great in drinks, which I'll show you some more later. But what I like to do is to trim some of this and put it at the base of a chocolate cake. Because as you know, chocolate and mint, great companions in cooking for a long time. So I'm just going to trim some mint off this little plant. Here's a tray already going, greased and ready to go. And I'm just going to layer my mint in the bottom. And as this cooks, that lovely minty goodness will come up through the chocolate cake. This is a great, very easy, plain chocolate cake recipe using dark chocolate, of course, only the best. And um, it's a good way just to add a little bit of extra to your chocolate cake mix by putting the mint on the bottom. So we're just putting this chocolate cake mix on the top, making sure that all the mint is covered. And now it can go into the oven with those lemon myrtle biscuits and be ready for two yummy things to have with your lemon myrtle tea. While that's cooking, I'm going to show you one of my favourite Warrigal Green recipes. Warrigal Greens is a fantastic vegetable that you could use as if you were using any spinach type vegetable, but it does have oxalic acid in it, which does need to be broken down so that your body is able to digest it better. To do that, we're just simply going to remove the leaves and blanch them. If you've never blanched a vegetable before, it's really easy. Simply put all your leaves into a bowl, pour boiling water on top, and then very quickly transfer them out of the boiling water into cold water. You'll see that the leaves still keep their lovely green colour. 
but are now much easier for your body to digest. For this particular pesto recipe, I'm going to team up my warrigal greens with another great bush food, and that's bunion nuts. Bunion nuts are fantastic. They're a really versatile bush food. To cook them, I put the nuts into boiling water and allow them about 20 minutes until they start to split. So you'll see here, this has started to split on the top. After cutting hundreds of kilos of bunions and cutting my fingers a lot, I found this to be the best tool ever. This is a quick cut PVC pipe cutter from the hardware store. To cut my bunions, once they've opened up, then I simply place them in here with the blade in the part that has opened, press down, and the butt is cut. And there's your nut. I'm going to use this noisy chopper to make the pesto and to add my nuts to the bottom. When you've done your bunion nuts and you've cooked them and you've taken them out of the husk, you can also just simply meal them in a blender and put them in the freezer and then they can be incorporated into any pastry cooking that you're doing, into soups, all sorts of things. I'm going to add two garlic cloves. And then the warrigal greens on top. Now you can make this pesto with just warrigal greens and the bunion nuts. I like to add a little bit of basil, mainly because I like the flavour of basil, but I think it adds just a little bit of extra zest to the pesto. Now, it goes on. Now some noise. I'm going to start this chopping to start with and get it all sort of combined together and then I'll add some olive oil as I go. So you can see the bunion nuts and the warrigal greens are starting to combine together and they're chopped up. Once you add a liquid though, it'll start to mesh them together a lot more. Don't be alarmed by how much olive oil is going in. As you can see, you need to add a little bit more to start breaking this down a bit further. So here's our bunny nut pesto, combined up with warrigal greens and some garlic and a little bit of basil and olive oil. This is great with pasta or with crackers and cheese. Can be added to other things that you're making as well that are savory. Okay, I'd like to show you all these lovely things we're going to now have for our morning tea. So we've got our warrigal greens and bunion nut pesto, lemon myrtle almond biscuits, our chocolate and mint cake, and to finish it all off, the tea that we made earlier with the lemon myrtle leaves has now gone cold. So as a cold tea, lemon myrtle is fantastic. We're combining this with equal quantities of pineapple juice and soda water. So now I'm going to just top it with our native mint and it's a perfect drink to have with everything else. Mm. Delicious. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this has given you some inspiration to use some of these ingredients in your cooking. And as you can see, you don't need to necessarily wait for things to flower and fruit. You can use leaves of bush foods in your garden all year round. Thanks very much for watching.